Good morning and thank you for joining us today. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. Please, if you know me, you know what already what I'm going to say. I want you to share right now to show that you care. Sharing is caring. So make sure you, you share this with someone even right now. Click that share button on this Father's Day. I want you to click like you've never clicked on share before because you believe that God is going to give us an awesome message on today. So I want you to make sure you do that even right now. Uh, start a watch party if you would. And also gather your family uh, around, if you will, even right now. As we prepare ourselves to go before the Lord's throne of grace in prayer, I want you to know we are excited about the fact that this is Father's Day. And we don't take it lightly, nor do we take it for granted for every father, for every stepfather, for every father figure, for every person that has stood in the gap for children and raised their children the best that they could. For those who have suffered and who have worked and supported their families this day, we say thank you to all fathers. So if you would please bow your heads now as we go before the Lord in prayer. God, how we thank you for this Father's Day. Thank you, Lord, that even on a day like today, God, we can thank you because you are a good father. God, you've been a good father to us. But God, we also want to thank you for the gift of fatherhood. Thank you, Lord, for those fathers who have stood the test of time, those who have sacrificed to provide for their families, those who have given the best that they could, those who have done the best that they could. God, thank you for fathers even right now. Thank you for those father figures who have stepped in and filled in the gap, God, and helped to raise some children, God. Thank you for those who have tried to raise children on their own, God, for those who have seemingly struggled, God, to try to make ends meet, but did the best they could. We thank you for every father, even right now. We thank you, God, for the gift of knowing, God, if we honor our father and our mother, that our days will be long upon the earth. So, God, we take this time to give honor where honor is due, God. We pray, God, that even now, that this will be a day where they feel appreciated and celebrated even now. I pray, God, that even now, for those of God who are listening under the sound of my voice, so, God, I pray, for those who have heavy hearts, so for those who have, uh, for those of God who are going through troubles and trials even now, I pray, God, that you would inter intervene on their behalf, God. I pray that whatever they may be going through, God, that they can st still look up to the hills from which cometh their help, knowing that all their help comes from you, God. I pray that you will be the lifter of their heads even right now, God, for those who are sick and uh, confined to hospital beds or confined to their homes. I pray for healing from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet, God. Heal them body, mind, and spirit, God. I pray, God, that you would heal the brokenhearted even right now, God, that you would mend wounds, God, that have been left by what people have done to them. I pray even right now, God, that you would give them peace of mind, God, even in the midst of their situation, God, and even as our country continues to be in a place of unrest, God, I pray that you would allow love to abide even right now, God, as we continue to seek to come together on one accord. Help us, oh God, to continue to have dialogue. Help us to continue to communicate one to another. But God, we pray that you would be in the midst of all of this, oh God. And we thank you because, God, we know you're able to do anything but fail. So have your way 
on this worship experience. Oh God, I pray that you would move from this place to their place. God, thank you that even right now, God, you can make our living room, our sanctuary, even right now, God, thank you that our office place now is how is hallowed ground. Even right now, God, for we thank you that where your presence is, God, there is liberty. So God, thank you for the freedom that you've given us to worship you in spirit and in truth, even right now. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do. Give us a word from on high on today. And, and we praise you in Jesus name. Amen. Listen again, take this time to click that share button. Even now, make sure you start a watch party. If you can uh, do it right now before we get started, you do not want anybody to miss this. Also, if if you are a father again, we want to thank God for you. We don't take it lightly, nor do we take it for granted for all that you've done and all that you've given for the sake of your family. At this time, we are in a series entitled The Reentry Plan as we prepare ourselves for when we may physically be going back into the church buildings. We are also wanting to uh, make sure we understand how important how we go back into the building is. And I believe that we ought to make sure that when we go back to the house of God, we ought to go back with the spirit of reverence. And so we've been taking a look through the Old Testament. The book of Exodus has shown us uh, in the construction of the, ta the tabernacle and how in the outer gates, uh, in the outer courts, excuse me, you had uh, the brazen altar of sacrifice. And then you had the brazen laver uh, where you were to wash your hands and wash your feet before entering the inner courts. And then once you enter the inner courts, then you are uh, found. We have found that you have the golden lampstand, which represents the seven churches of Asia. Then we talked about uh, the uh, golden altar of incense, which uh, suggests that in our prayer life, we ought to make sure we we uh, go before the Lord in prayer before we seek his presence. And so today uh, on this Father's Day, we want to go uh, to the book of Exodus again. We're going to look at Exodus chapter 25 and we're going to read verses 23 through 30. And then we're going to read Leviticus chapter 23, 24, excuse me. And we're going to read verses five through eight. So that's Exodus chapter 25 verses 23 through 30. And then we'll read Leviticus chapter 24, verses four, five through eight. Amen. And it says these words. Make a table of acacia wood, two cubits long, a cubit wide and a cubit and a half high. And overlay it with pure gold and make a golden molding around it. Also make it a rim hand breadth wide and put gold molding around the rim. Make four gold rings for the table and fasten them to the, cor to the four corners where the four legs are. The rings are to be close to the rim to hold the poles used in carrying the table. Make the poles of acacia wood, overlay them with gold and carry the table with them. Make its plates and dishes of pure gold, as well as its pitchers and bowls of the pouring out of offerings. Put the bread of the presence on this table to be, to be before me at all times. Leviticus chapter 24 verses five through eight says it this way. It says, take the finest flour and, and bake 12 loaves of bread using two tenths of ephah for each loaf. Arrange them in two stacks, six in each stack on the table of pure gold before the Lord by each stack, put some pure incense as a memorial portion to represent the bread and to be a food offering presented to the Lord. This bread is to be set out before the Lord regularly, Sabbath after Sabbath on behalf of the Israelites as a lasting covenant. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. I want to use for a subject today. Sending you forget me nots, sending you forget me nots. As we celebrate Father's Day, Father's Day is a time where we get to 
pay tribute to those who have demonstrated what true fatherhood really means. It is a time where we take a trip down memory lane to consider how many times we have experienced memorable moments with our fathers. Father's Day is a time where, if we be honest, it makes you remember some things uh, uh, in your childhood that you may not have thought about lately. Father's Day is a time to reflect on some of the uh, lessons that you learn. Father's Day is a time to, to give thanks for fathers who have made sure that they put their efforts into training you and teaching you the way that you should go. Father's Day is a time where we, we get to thank God for fathers who have shown themselves to be uh, support systems to you, who have been there to support you in your games and in your efforts and in your, while, while you were going and making college decisions and while you were going for basic training and making sure that you had all the things that you need. Father's Day is a time where you thank God for fathers who took time to teach you some of the necessities that you will need to go through in your life. Father's Day is a time where you thank God for fathers who taught you how to change tires on your cars and change the oil and how, 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 to, how to make things happen in the conference room and in the boardrooms. Father's Day is a time where you thank God for the little things that, taught, that he taught you how to ride your bikes and taught you how to uh, mend some things together. Father's Day is a good time to remember some of the things you may have forgotten, but when, when you have had some memories uh, of your father, some of those memories are hard to forget. And so it is when we look at the true essence of Father's Day, one of the greatest fathers that we can talk about is God the Father, because it is God who is a good, good father. God sets the supreme example of what a good father is supposed to be like. But as we prepare ourselves to uh, enter into the presence of the, the, the holiest of holies, uh, th there's, there's a, uh, another piece of furniture that we, that we see that is constructed. God gives specific instructions about the table of, show, of showbread. God gives specific instructions regarding the table of showbread, because before you can get into my presence, you, you have to make sure you follow the instructions set before you even now. He says, I want the table of showbread to be made up of uh, acacia wood. And then once you construct it out of acacia wood, he said, then I want you to make sure you overlay it with gold, make sure that you overlay it with gold. Then make sure you put rings in it so that when you put the rods through it to carry it, the rings will be able to support it. And he says, uh, when you make this, uh, this, this, uh, this uh, table of showbread, it, it is to have on the table presented, uh, presented every week, you have to make sure that daily you have uh, what, what's called showbread that is a representation. It is 12 loaves of bread that is uh, specifically prepared with, with, some, uh, with some details and some, some preparation that has to go into it in order to make sure that the bread stays fresh. Watch this all week long from Sabbath to Sabbath, the bread is supposed to be presented as a as a reminder. Here it is of the provision that God has set before you. So the bread has to be prepared so that every week that you have fresh bread and watch this. The bread stayed fresh for seven days from Sab Sabbath to Sabbath. It was an old family recipes that were secret recipes that only certain families had access to. But the preparation period uh, was so that they can have the bread. And he said, I want each uh, I want on each side of it. I want you to have of the 12 loads put uh, six on one side and six on the other side. And he said, then put some incense on top of it so that uh, it can be used as a food offering. So that when you when you see the table of showbread, it shows here it is that you are grateful that the Lord has been your provider. And the bread is called the, the, the bread of presence. It is it is indicative of the fact that not only has God provided, but God has been present. And so when we look at the fact that uh, God shows us through the construction of the table of showbread uh, what he intends for it to look like. Let's deal 
with why it is important for us to have this table, uh, even in our hearts, even understanding why it is God, who is a good father, wants this table to be a representation of the fact. Here it is that if I am giving you what you need, the table of showbread is a representation that uh, this is there's some things watch this, that I don't want you to forget. So the table of showbread helps you to remember what the Lord has done in your life. And so as we look at the table of showbread, it, there's some things that 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 we can draw from the table of showbread that helps us to celebrate why God is a good father and why you may have a good father. And uh, one of the first things that we see uh, that a good father does, as well as the table of showbread uh, does, it, it says that in order to understand a real good father is able to equip you with preparing life for you. Good father is responsible for uh, preparing life for you prior to you getting here. The, a good father makes sure that there's some preparations made why it says before you even get here in order for the table of showbread to have what it needed. It, it wasn't they didn't wait until they got to the presence of God to, to prepare it. No, they prepared it before they got into the presence. Let me explain this to you. And so a good father, if you have a good father, what a good father will do is he will prepare life for you before he, you, he gives life to you. A good father will prepare life for you before he gives life to you. What what are you saying? Well, says the Bible says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He said, let there be. And there was he said, let there be light and there light was. He says, let there be the sky and the land and the sea. And then he said, let there be birds of the air and let there be fish of the sea. Let there be beasts of the field. He made the grass to grow. He made the trees to sway. He, he, he created the clouds and the moon and the sun. And and after he got through creating everything, he said, then let us make man. Y'all missed it. So here it is again. He prepared the place before he provided the people. And so it is a good father is good because he's able to prepare life for you before he gives life to you. You ought to thank God even right now that God had prepared some things for you. God has prepared some things. There's some things here. It is when we say God has a blessing with your name on it. What you really ought to be under understanding is that whatever God has for you is already done. He has already prepared it. Why says before you were born? He says, I knew you before you were even in the womb. So I had already prepared some things for you before you even got here. Tell your neighbor, that's a good father. That's a good father. We praise God for preparations. We praise God not only only for preparing life for me. But watch this. Sometimes you got to praise God that he's a good father that prepares you for life. Now, there's there's somebody that's saying, well, what do you mean? Watch this. Not only does he prepare life for you, but he prepares you for life. How do you know? Psalm 23 says that thou prepares a table before me. Here it is in the presence of my enemies. You can't shout yet. So here, let me tell you why. A good father does not make your child naive to the fact that everybody going to like you. A good father will not make you believe that everybody is going to think you are the great new wonderful. A good father does not make their children uh, naive to the fact that there's a cruel world out here. And so therefore, when you enter outside of my house, then you are hit by the reality that everybody ain't going to like you. But what a good father will do is a good father will prepare you for life. Watch this. A good father says, says he says he prepares a table before me. Here it is in the presence of my enemies. In other words, here it is. You gonna eat. The father has prepared life for you so that you can eat. And so you gonna eat. But watch this. What I also want you to do is I want you to be able to eat in front of folks that don't want you to be here. I, I want you to be able to still survive in front of folks that don't want you to be alive. I, I want to know, watch this, I, I'm going to prepare you, watch this, to sit at the table, here it is, with folks that don't even like you.
Aren't you glad that a good father will prepare you for life there? There's some people who thought that they can run you away, that people that thought they could scare you off. But what they didn't know is I got a good, good father that prepared me on how to handle my haters. I, I got a good father that prepared me of how to watch this sit in the lunchroom, knowing you rolling your eyes at me and still make decisions in the boardroom without having to go to the courtroom. I got a good, good father that prepared me for life, that that prepared me as the poem said that that life ain't going to be no crystal state. There's there's going to be some nails and some some splinters along the way. There's going to be some times where people will not like you for no reason, but you still got to know who you are and whose you are. You ought to thank God that you got a good father that prepares life for you, but then also prepares you for life. Somebody needs to hear me uh, that's watching even by way of the Internet. Somebody uh, is watching that that you've been going through some hell on your job and watch this and they keep wondering why you haven't given given up yet, but you ought to tell somebody that I was prepared for this. I, I already knew, watch this, that I was going to have some people that hate me, watch this, with, for no other reason but just for who I am. There's some people that won't like me just for the color of my skin, and if my black is offensive to you, watch me shine in front of you. Is there anybody that knows that sometimes God will prepare you for life because he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies? No, haters, you will not make me lose my appetite. No, you will not make me change my my way of doing things. No, you will not make me run and play scared. I've got to make sure that I give God the best I have because he already prepared me for life. So a good father is known for preparing life for you and preparing you for life. But not only does a good father prepare you, but a good father is present for you. Listen to this. Huh. The bread is called the bread of presence. And when you look at what a good father is, a good father uh, is always present. And aren't you glad that you may have a father that if you can't think of nothing else, you can think about the fact he was there for whatever he you needed him to be there for. He was always there. He was there for your basketball games. He was there to see you off for college. He was there when you were in your lowest point. He was there. Watch this. Even if it was just to watch TV with him, he he was there to help you with your hair when your mother couldn't do it. He was there to help you with your car when nobody was able to fix it for you. He was there to watch this singing songs and singing uh, hymns to help you along the way. He was there and you are to praise God that a good father is present. You got to praise God for his presence. And and what you got to understand is a good father may not always have presence, but he also knows that he is to be present. I, I'm going to say it again. Here it is. You, you may not have the present. You may not have gifts present, but you got to know that your presence is a gift. A good father knows that he, he, he's got to be there when you need him the most. A shoulder to cry on, a, a, a ear to listen to. Is there anybody that can praise God that you had a father that was present? David says, uh, where, where shall I go that you're not there? God, you, you are omnipresent. If I make my bed in hell, you're there. If, if, I, if, I, if I have two wings as a dove, God, and fly away, you're still there. Is there anybody that can praise God that God has been there all the time, no matter if you find yourself in a fiery furnace God is there if you find yourself in the lion's den God is present if if you find yourself in life and trying to find out where God is you ought to know that God is everywhere at the same time you ought to praise God that he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me that I am his own you ought to shout thank God for his presence in my life a good father prepares and a good father is present in your life you got to thank God for his presence even right now. But not only do we thank God that a good father prepares and not only do we thank God that a good father is present, but then here it is, a good father provides. Uh, the reason we have the table of showbread is to suggest that we we take note and we remember God has given you some forgive me nots to help you to remember that the Lord provides. Some ought to type that even right now, that the Lord provides. Thank God that he is Jehovah Jireh. He is the Lord, my provider. But God also gave you a father physically on earth that is a provider. He he gave you somebody that understood the the eth the, the work ethic uh, the, that you had to have in order to make ends meet. He gave you a good, good 
good father that was able to do the best he can to provide for his family. And is there anybody that's grateful for having a father that was a provider? Yes. I, I know that, that the Bible says uh, that, that if you want to know what a provider looks like, Jesus says, uh, what, what I want you to do. And, and he's in uh, I'm in Matthew chapter six, verse 11. He says, uh, and give us this day. Here it is. Our daily bread. God provides uh, not just for us uh, on the weekends, but God gives us what we need every day. Can you thank God even right now that in spite of what I've gone through, I, 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 I wish I had some witnesses that God has provided for me every day. You you may not have what you want, but you've got what you need. David said, I've been young and I've been old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. You ought to thank God that God is a provider. Yes, he is. Is God provides for me. How many ways can you say that God provides for me? I want to thank God that God is such a provider that God provides me with all of my needs. Watch this. The Bible says, and my God shall supply all my needs according to his riches in glory. I'm glad I'm grateful even right now that the Lord is a provider. Not only does he provide me in, with the supplies that I need, but God also Watch this, supplies me with rest in green pastures. Watch what watch what the Bible says. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He he restores my soul. He leadeth me beside still water. Is there anybody knows that a good father will provide you with a place of rest? Yeah, a good father knows, watch this, that in order to conquer this cruel world, you need a place that you can go where you can just lay down yourself and rest. But not only does a good father give me a place of rest, but then an, another thing the good father does a good father provides me with help listen to the Bible he says I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from which cometh my help and recognize that all my help comes from the Lord is there anybody knows that every now and then you ought to thank God that God has been a very present help in your time of trouble that's what a good father looks like is able to provide help when I need him the most when I'm down to nothing I can look up to the hills from which cometh my help knowing that all my help comes from the Lord but not only does God provide help but listen to this God provides grace that's 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 that abounds. He says, I, I want you to know that I'm going to give you grace, all grace that abounds. I'm going to give you so much grace that you can't even contain it. Is there anybody that's grateful that the father provides us with grace? What is grace? God's unmerited favor. That's why you can walk around like you blessed and highly favored. Because watch this. The Lord gives me grace. That's why I'm blessed in the city. I am blessed in the field. I'm blessed going in and I'm blessed coming out. Somebody will praise God that your father provides you with grace that abounds. But not only does he give me grace that abounds, he gives me peace that surpasses. I'm on a roll today. You ought to praise God that the father provides you with peace that surpasses all understanding. That's why when all hell and high water is breaking all around you, you can thank God that God gives you peace that surpasses all understanding. God gives you peace in the midst of storm. No matter how the storms of life are raging, God can give you peace. That's how you can keep your mind while everybody else is losing theirs because God gives me peace. But not only does the father provide me grace that abounds and peace that surpasses, but God gives me joy that's unspeakable. Is there anybody in the house that's watching from your house that can praise God that this joy that I have, yes, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. You ought to praise God that I've got joy, unspeakable joy. God gives me joy joy. Where did you get the joy from? Because there's some times where you may experience some sadness and there's some times where I might not have happiness. But is there anybody that knows I got some joy down in my soul and this joy that I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. But not only does he give me grace that abounds and peace that surpasses and joy that's unspeakable, but he gives me love that's unconditional. Somebody ought to praise God that the father provides you with love that's unconditional. There are some people who say they love you, but their love is conditional. It is based on the fact that you can do something for them. There are some people who say they love you based on what you are able to uh, give them. There are some people who are able to say they love you, watch this, but then when you mess up, they don't love you no more. But aren't you glad that God's love that he provides is unconditional? You ought to thank God even right now that God loves you no matter how raggedy you are. God loves you no matter how much wrong you've done. God loves you just the way you are. You 
are, and he gives you love that's unconditional. Here it is. But then not only does a good father provide you with grace that abounds and peace that surpasses and joy that is joy that is unspeakable and gives you grace that abounds. Here it is. He also gives you love that's un unconditional. But he gives you life that's eternal. That's a good father. The good father gives me life that is eternal. Here it is. Because uh, Jesus says uh, in uh, John chapter six, verses 48 through 51, he says, I am the bread of life. Yes, he, he, he gives you life that that is eternal. He says, I am I am the bread of life. And Jesus says, uh, now, now what you understand is that you have received the children of Israel received manna from on high. In other words, God gave them bread from heaven. Yeah, he gave them bread that came from heaven and and that 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 allowed them to survive. But they still died. He says, but what I want you to know is that I am the bread of life. Not only am I the bread of life, but I'm the bread of heaven. He says, God gave you bread from heaven. That was physical needs. But God says, but Jesus says, but I am the bread of heaven. And there always be some some old folks. I can hear some old some old fathers that used to sing the song. It says bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me till I won't no more. Somebody ought to praise God that you you got a good, good father that provides you with life eternal. He he gives you bread. And watch this. And he said, anyone that eats of this bread, uh, he shall never die. And, and listen to this. You ought to thank God that even right now that while it is we are celebrating the good, good father that he is, that because his love is unconditional, God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him won't perish, but have everlasting life. It is it is for this reason that Jesus, as he is realizing that his time on earth is about to uh, become uh, come to an end. Jesus gathers the disciples for what we consider to be the last supper. And I, I want you even right now, as you are listening to me, I want you to gather a cracker or a piece of bread or something and get some juice. And I want you to get some coffee, whatever you need to drink, some water, whatever you need, because I want you now that you start to understand how important this bread is, because if Jesus is the bread of life, he 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 gathers them uh, together so that they can have the Lord's Supper. And it is the last supper, but it is also the Lord's Supper. So I want us even right now to pause for station identification, because now is a good time to explain to you how 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 incredibly uh, uh, important this moment is because Jesus gathers him. He says, uh, one of you is going to betray me. I already know that. But but here it is. While I have you gathered here, it's time for us to break bread together. And Jesus, uh, the Bible says Jesus took the bread and he uh, broke it in half. And when he had given thanks, Jesus took the bread. Yeah, he, he took the bread. And uh, he, he gave God praise for the bread. Y'all, y'all miss it. Here it is again. It says that Jesus uh, took the bread and after he had given, he gave thanks for the bread. He gave thanks for the bread because what he says is this bread is my body. Here it is, which was broken for you. I, I, I wish I could get some witnesses that that can thank God for this bread. Th this bread uh, is is my body, which is broken for you. And I want you to. Take this and eat it. Watch this. And as often as you eat it. Now, here's your shout, because now we have resorted to only taking communion once a month as if that is enough. But watch this. He says, but I want you to take it and eat it. And as often as you do it, here it is. You do it in remembrance of me. Y'all missed it. Here it is again. Jesus said, I'm going to give you some forget me nots to help you to remember every time you eat this bread, every time you break bread, every time you look at a loaf of bread, it ought to remind you of what I did for you. It ought to remind you of how I prepared you. It was present with you. It ought to remind you of how I provided for you. Y'all missed it. Here it is again. Jesus prepared the people for a coming for a coming Lord. He prepared the people for what God for the kingdom that was coming, the kingdom that was at hand. He prepared the people for his departure. He prepared the people for the Holy Spirit. Then he was present with the people. He was present with the woman with the issue of blood. He was present with the lame man. He was present with 
with with those who uh, came who were sick and lame and halt. He was present with the disciples. He was present with Peter as he walked on water. But he said, but now I want you to know that what I'm about to provide is my life. And so I want you to have these forget me nots to help you to remember as often as you eat this bread. Watch this. You do so in remembrance of me. I don't want you to just remember me on Father's Day. Don't don't just remember me when it's convenient for you. He says, but but as often, however many times you want to remember every time you think about me, you, you ought to remember the, the things that I did for you, how I provided for you, how I was present with you and how I prepared you. And Jesus took the bread and they took it and they ate it. He said, this cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he comes. And I'm encouraging somebody right now who can testify that God has been a good father. And, and, and the table of showbread is simply to remind you, watch this, that, that for, for the 12 loaves that were there, which represents the 12 tribes of Jude, of, of Israel. Not only was God present for those 12 families, but God's been present for you and your family. You ought to testify that if it had not been for the Lord who was yet on my side, I don't know where I would be. And so today I want to make sure that we don't take for granted that everybody doesn't have a relationship with their father. Everybody doesn't have a relationship, here it is, with their physical father, but everybody doesn't have a relationship with their spiritual father. And so even right now, as I extend the invitation of discipleship, I want to offer you the opportunity to connect with your father again. I, I want you to take this moment to, to connect with a God that prepared you for life, that, that watch this, that was present in your life the whole time and who provided all you needed. I want you to take this moment to thank God that even right now, God, thank you that you've always been there for me. When did you get there? You were there all the time. If you don't have a relationship with this good, good father, name, name God, I, I want you now to just simply say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I confess that I'm a sinner that needs to be saved by you. I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you rose on the third day so that I could have eternal life. And I'm, 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 I'm accepting you as my Lord and my Savior. Come into my life, change my heart, and I'll never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. If you prayed this prayer, I want you to know that the Lord is available to you even right now. And I, I'm praying that God would allow you to unite with the church family where you can be fed, watch this, the bread of heaven. You, you got to praise God even right now, that God has given you life and that more abundantly even right now. And so it is, the table of showbread was an act to give to the giver. Table of showbread was an act of giving to the giver. And what, what you're giving is, you recognize that God provided you with daily bread. And so that the families were able to then give God daily bread. That, that's what you got to do. That, that went from Sabbath to Sabbath. So when you give today, as you prepare yourself to sow today, just remember what God has given you on a daily basis. And I want you even right now to make up your mind that I'm going to make sure that I support what God is doing. I'm going to give because God keeps on giving to me. And so as you prepare to give today, I want you to know that there's three ways that you can give. First way is through our church website, which is www.stjameseastlake.com. The second way is by mail, which is 7309 Oporto Avenue, Birmingham, Alabama, 35206. And the third way is through Cash App, which is dollar sign St. James E.L. Dollar sign St. James E.L. When you give, the Lord says, I'll give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over, shall men pour into your bosoms. Listen again, I'm grateful for the fact that you, you joined us today. You came to share with us on this Father's Day. Again, to every father, we salute you. 
We honor you. We celebrate you on today. Y'all, please make sure you take care of every father today. Make sure you take care of every father. Treat him right. Make sure you go take them to a nice restaurant. Make sure you get them a nice gift like we showed out for Mother's Day. We want you to show out for Father's Day as well. <laughs> Make sure that you treat them with the utmost uh, respect and honor on today as we celebrate the gift of fatherhood on today. And we thank God for all fathers, for all stepfathers, for every father figure, for everybody that stepped in on behalf of any family member or any uh, children. Thank God for all of you. Even right now, I'm excited about what God is going to do. Remember, share this even right now. But also, I want you to make sure you join us this Wednesday as we continue uh, this this series on the reentry plan. We are getting ready to go into the holies of holies. We're getting ready to go into the holies of holies. And I want you to be present Wednesday, 6 p.m. for the message. I'm at the end of my rope. I, I'm, I want you to make sure you make plans, preparations to meet me right here. Uh, on Wednesday for our Wednesday online worship experience. And the message will be, I'm at the end of my rope. Remember, I want you to stay safe, stay saved, and make sure you continue to practice social distancing and washing your hands and make sure you cover yourself as much as you can. I am Pastor Richard Holman. Uh, this is St. James Baptist Church Eastlake. And we want you to know that we love you and there is nothing you can do about it. God bless you. God keep you is our prayer.